Welcome to Icons with your host, Rob Feeney. The show that visits with celebrities and corporate executives willing to share their stories and ideas to help you succeed in business. You are currently listening to part one. Meet today's icon. Welcome to Icons. Let's dig in. Welcome to Icons. I'm your host, Rob Feeney. We've got a great show for you today. Our next guest is the founder and president of the first female focused guitar company called Daisy Rock Girl Guitars. Please welcome Tish Siravallo. How you doing, Tish? I'm really fabulous, Rob. Thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you for joining us. What a privilege. And share with us how you really got the idea for your business concept and really realize the demand for it. How did this all start? Wow, it's a really interesting story. Um, you know, I was a uh, rock musician in Los Angeles in the 80s, and I played bass in a lot of uh, different type of girl bands. And, you know, there's only a handful of us back then. Very few girls played back then. And we would all kind of get together and uh, commiserate about how we were treated as female musicians in the community. Basically, when you'd walk into a music store to buy strings and stuff, the guy behind the counter would always be like, so, who's your boyfriend in the band? Uh, right, right. <laughs> you know, and then there was that whole terminology of pretty good for a girl. And, you know, if you were a girl that played guitar or bass, you, you were, you know, from the wrong side of the tracks, kind of, or the bad girl, mm. you know, which is really awesome in a way. But, <laughs> you know, still at the same time, you know, there's a lot of discrimination that happened against us because we were female musicians. And so you kind of fast forward my life a little bit, and I was playing a lot of bands, and then I decide to have a child. And one day my daughter is sitting there, and she draws a daisy, and I drew a neck on it and a headstock on it, and I looked at it, and I went, oh! <gasps> We should make guitars for girls because then if we made guitars for girls, then the stores would buy them and then there would be something actually at the store level for girls to see when they walked in. And then we would inspire a whole new generation of girls to want to learn how to play guitar. I just really wanted my daughter to have a different experience. I wanted her to be able to walk into a music store and feel like this is my world. This is where I belong. And I had never felt that. So it came from my past history and then seeing what my daughter was going to have to go through as a musician, knowing that I would make her be a musician, but she is a musician anyway. And I only wanted to change the world. I just thought, you know what, we need a girls rock revolution. We need to just change the way things have been for 40 years and completely change the industry. And that's what I did. Obviously, you made the right decision. I mean, look at your client roster. My God, it was Avril Lavigne, Joan Jett, uh, Anna Nancy Wilson, Miley Cyrus. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, I mean, were you surprised and are you surprised by the demand and how the company just took off? Was that sort of a shock at first or did you kind of expect this to take off right from the shoot? You know, it wasn't, you know, the first thing I did was the Rocker Girl Conference in 2000 in Seattle, and I put a couple of guitars on the wall, and I kind of saw how women reacted to it, and all the girls kind of said the same thing, like, this is really cute, this is a really long overdue concept, but the really big show for me was January 2001 when I did my first NAM show, which I don't know if you know about the music industry, but NAM, the National Association of Musical Merchants, is our big industry show we do every year, where we're, every guitar company comes and they display all their new guitars. And so I got a booth, and I displayed Daisy Rock, and the reaction was really mixed. Um, I, I heard a thousand, oh, my God, that is so cute, to, oh, girls will never walk into a music store and buy a guitar. So when I started, I did a consignment with dealers. I would go to the mom-and-pop dealers, and I would say, hey, just put one in your window. That's not going to hurt anything. Just get it out there so women will see it. And I promise you, you will have females that will come into your store that have never walked into a music store before. So my idea was here I was creating a, a whole new consumer for all of the different uh, dealers that would come into their store. Um, and that was like a really rough start, it, you know, because it had never been done before. You have no proven track history of, yes, this is going to work. And, you know, this, all the marketing that we had done for the company was really guerrilla marketing, just trying to get on, you know, the ground level and, and get a movement going. And so, uh, but now, 10 years, 10-year 10 anniversary this year, and it's amazing. I look back over the last 10 years and go, I've been so blessed with so many people that looked at this and went, I don't know why Fender didn't do this. I don't know why Gibson didn't do this, but this has been something that should have happened a long time ago. And thank God Daisy Rock Guitars came along and did it. And so let me ask you this too, as far as the demand goes, was it hard for it to be accepted in the industry at first and then it took off? Or was there a pretty much a strong financial, I guess, revenue increase right away with it? Or did it take a while to kind of catch on or was it well accepted right away? 
lot of catch on. And it was because it had just never been done before. And so we had both schools of thought at the time. We had the person and the dealer that thought, oh, my God, this is awesome. Give me lots of these. I'm going to put these in all our stores. I know that there's an industry for this. And then we had the, the dealer that said, girls don't want to play guitar. Mm-hmm. So our whole objective in the last 10 years has been to prove them all wrong, that, yes, girls do want to play guitar. We do want to rock and play funk and go out there and just, you know, be better than the guys are, if you can say that. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> and, you know, it's just because of, like, how society has been. You know, I was raised in the 70s, and when I was watching television in the 70s, there wasn't any girls really on television except Leather Tuscadero from Happy Days, <laughs> who's Susie Quattro in real life, and she got on Happy Days, and she played bass guitar, and I remember being like 10, 11 years old going, oh my God, I don't know what she's doing, but that is the coolest thing I've ever seen, mm-hmm. and that was like my first impression of, wow, a girl can actually play guitar or bass? You know, there was like so few and far between um, people to look up, girls to look up to back in those days. Now, so when I started my company in 2000, and Nickelodeon and Disney have both had massive amounts of shows and movies, Freaky Friday is one of them, as girls that play guitar, and they're successful at it, and they're having fun with it, and it's part of their lives, and they're talking about, they're putting their life experiences into guitar. And so my daughters are now being raised with this concept that guitar is just an everyday occurrence for a girl. Never before has that happened. Besides the female focus, What's, you know, really the difference between Daisy Rock and other brands like Fender, Gibson, and, you know, Paul Reed Smith and Music Man? You know, guitars are guitars. Guitars are wood and strings and electronics. Um, We all make the same things. But what makes a girl guitar is the fact that we make the neck a slim and narrow neck. A slim and narrow neck means a girl can put her hand around the neck and push the strings down a lot easier than she can on other guitars. A lot of guitars feel like a baseball bat in your hands when you're trying to play them. So that's really what defines a girl guitar is the slim and narrow neck. Besides the fact that we do all of these fabulous colors and fun shapes and sizes, and, you know, we are the only girl guitar company, meaning that we answer every kind of girl that wants to play music. So from the acoustic-driven singer-songwriter girl to the metal girl that's out there, we want to be the different types of guitars for every different type of girl. That is the end of Part 1. Please join us for Part 2. We hope you enjoyed listening to Icons. Check out other segments and guest interviews. If you have ideas for future topics or would like to be a guest on our show, please call 763-412-0771. Icons is produced and recorded by Jason Medvek at Batcave Studios in St. Paul, Minnesota. For Rob Feeney, I'm Sunny Warner. And find me at SunnyWarner.com. Thanks for listening to Icons.